Hello guys, welcome back. Let's go through the OpenAI Assistant in depth in this video. In the last video, I showed you how you can create the OpenAI Assistant agent with Llama Index and also I showed you how you can do with the code and how that is reflected in the OpenAI UI. In this video, let's go through some of the things that I had already gone through but in depth. I will show you the simple example of function calling because they have introduced the function calling as well as how you can use the parallel function calling because based on the query, the function can be called parallel now. And the next one is about the code interpreter, as you can see here. And about the code interpreter, it might be confusing because as the name suggests, it's the code interpreter, but you can do math stops. You can write the code, let's say process the code, and also you can process the files and create the charts out of it. Well, there is the typo in the create, but you know I'm saying that create. Then there is the last part, which is really interesting about the retrieval uh, part. What we can do is just upload the document and then uh, everything is done under the hood. And then we get the results out of it. And when we combine this code interpreter retrieval together, we can see quite powerful things there. I will show you one example where we will upload a PDF and we will create a charts from the table that is present inside that particular. And if you are new to retrieval part, if you have watched my previous videos where I have explained you about the retrieval augmented generation, this is the process. How it works is first, let's say that you have uh, some book or some document. We need to extract the information out of it. Then we will split it into different chunks. Then we pass that into the embeddings API and that is stored in a vector database as and we build a semantic index and later what we do is we ask a question and that is also passed through the embeddings api and embeddings is done and we pass that or we do the semantic sorts get the useful information out of it and then we 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 provide the answer right that is all the process that is handled now with the open ai assistant under the hood with the retrieval tools we will be going also through that so yeah, there are many things to cover, but I will explain you all this without writing a single piece of code in the uh, OpenAI's UI itself. Let's get started. Okay, this is the UI of the OpenAI. If you need to create the account, and by the way, you need to also uh, have your credit card into it so that you, you need to pay something for using this also. After that is done about the account creation, you can go to this assistant part here. Here are some of the assistants that I created before when I created my previous videos. I will create the new assistant here. You can go to this create icon here and then give some random name. I will just give it a test GPT for now and you are a helpful assistant. That's more than enough for now. We will be choosing a model. Okay, GPT 4.11.6 preview. First, I will show you with the functions how it works. I will just say save now. And once that is created, I can do the test. So it opens in a new UI or window. Now we have the test GPT. You can even modify this if you want. But let's, let me show you about the functions and how the parallel function calling works. Let me bring it here. Here I will just say, okay, add functions. And there are some examples already being provided. You can upload your own functions also. So here I will say get weather. So what does this has? It says, okay, get weather is the function name. Okay, determine weather in my location and all the different things. It's just a random dummy example. So we are just going to see how it plays into action. I will say save. There is one function. I will add more. Let me go here and add another one. It says get stock price. I will add this. There are two different functions. I can say save. Remember to do the save because if you don't save this, then it does not know that we are going to use that function. First thing I will say how you can do one function at a time. I can say, okay, what is the weather in... Helsinki. Okay. As you can see here, it says the weather, meaning that it goes through that particular get weather function. That's all I want to show you. And it says here Helsinki. And we haven't uh, hook up the weather API. It does not know and fetch the weather of Helsinki. But what you can do here just to go into next is just say, okay, success. You can just make it true. And then you can just close the bracket. This one or this one. I can say submit. So it says continuing the run and okay, I apologize, but it seems there was an issue retrieving the weather information for Helsinki field and let me try again and so on. But we haven't hooked off the weather API, so it is showing this. 
that's all what we want to do and now let me clear this one and let me show you which invoke these two functions by the way it doesn't make any sense but what i want to know here is i want to know the stock price of let's say apple and also the way the and also i can say and also if it is raining or not as i said it does not make any sense but then i just want to show you that it needs to invoke two of these functions when i ask this right as you can see here it says get stock price it goes through aapl and then it finds the stock price and also get weather so in one call both of these functions is being is being called that's just a simple example you can have as many functions as you want here and create the applications out of it so yeah that is done with the uh, functions part okay now let me create a new uh, assistant and let's go through the code interpreter for that i can go to this toggle here i can say create assistant and i can just give random name i'm going to go with the titanic data set so i will say titanic titanic gpt i don't need to provide anything here i will just choose the model this one and here i will on this code interpreter and don't forget to save this once this is saved what we can do is instead of uploading the files here what we can do is upload in the thread itself so think the thread as a new conversation it is just relying on that particular piece i don't want to upload the file for all the different retrieval code interpreter or something i just want it in this particular thread i uploaded the titanic csv file now i can ask the questions let me say i want to ask okay generate the chart showing the survived count of male and female this is not in but i can say male and female i will say add and run what it is going to do now is as i said here code interpreter is on it is going to first read the file so as you can see it says it looks like you have uploaded a file for generating a chart before we proceed i will need to check the contents of the file so that i can understand its structure after that afterward i can use the data to generate the requested chart right so here is the code interpreter if you click on top of this as you can see here it already provides the chart for us but here as you can see it reads the file and then it when something there is the titanic gpt the data appears to be structured with several columns and it says uh, including survived and sex right so we ask the question here generate the chart showing the survived count of male and female so it knows it needs to go through the survived and the sex column which we need to create the chart right and then it went through and there is also a code here you can see the code is being generated and then here is the chart it shows the survived count and survived count by gender there is the male and female this is how easily you can you can just go here and create a chart and you can maybe ask some more questions you can say let me see what you can do i have written the query here what i can do is here the number is not shown right what i can say is can you provide the count number on top of the plot i can say add and run now what it needs to do is again go through the process and then add the number so that it's easier for us to just read from the chart itself it is again going through the code interpreter and it says okay create the plot and now you can see here there is 109 male and then 233 female so let's say that you are not happy with the colors what you can do is can you change the color of the chart as simple as that now it will go through again and change the color you can even provide the specific colors and things and you can do the eda parts quite easily already in the uh, ui itself yeah so now as you can see it's different color than the previous one this is how you can just play around with this code interpreter this is just a simple example i showed you because it it creates the code and then also goes through the file that we uploaded and then creates the chart out of it that's all for this code interpreter part now let's go to the third one with the retrieval that is quite fascinating because i said you that we went through many steps when we create the retrieval rag implementations and then i will show you a cool example here let's go here and create a new assistant and here we will give some random name i will say it a paper gpt because i'm going to upload some gpt for all paper and i can just say you are a helpful assistant and then i will choose the model this one and i will just go with the retrieval 
part here and I will upload the file. Now this is being uploaded and once this is done, we can save it. So this is done, we can save it. I will clear this thread. Okay, now this is uploaded and now I can ask the questions here. But before asking some questions, let's go through the PDF, what we want to ask the question, right? So here is the PDF, so GPT for all paper. We can ask some specific questions. Let's say that uh, if inside here, I will ask two questions. One question is, let's say, okay, model training, the original GPT for all model was a fine-tuned variant of Llama 7B. What we can ask is, uh, what is the original GPT for all model fine-tuned on, right? Let me go to the code here on the UI. I can ask, okay, what is the original GPT for all model fine-tuned from, let's say like that, and add and run. So now whatever we did in the previous examples in my previous videos, the RAG implementation, it goes through all the process. It first goes through the paper and all the different things and it gets the answer already. Okay, the original GPT for all model was fine tuned from a variant of Llama 7B. And it also provides the source from where it is taken. You can just hover on top of this and it says the original GPT for all model was a fine tuned variant of Llama 7B. That is exactly from where we ask the question. That's that accurate and it gets the answer quite fast because there was many steps that it needs to go through. Okay, this is fine, but what if we want to go through the table now? Because the PDFs contains the table also, right? Let's go with the table part. Now again, I will go through this GPT for all paper and let's find a table. Okay, here is a table, right? There is the table, but what we want to ask it is to create a chart out of the table. And also let's be precise here. I will ask these five different, let's say that top five models and with all the different columns, let's ask it to create a chart if it is able to create or not, specifying that we want the information from the table one. What I can do is I can go to the UI here and let me see if I, I have already the question here. Okay, I have the questions already written here. I can go here and paste. Can you plot a chart of first five models from table one? I can just say here. What it needs to go through now is go through that PDF file, go through that specific part, extract the information from the table and create the chart for us out of it. Let's see if it is going to be achieving that task for us or not. Here it is going through this and now what it did was, as you can see here, it already extracted the information. It's going through the process so I cannot scroll up here but the as you can see here, I will now plot the chart. So meaning it is going to plot the chart. And by the way, one thing, I haven't even turned on the code interpreter here, but for some reason it is using the code interpreter. But yeah, this is quite a strange thing. But I don't know if it's remember from my previous one, but I didn't actually on the code interpreter. So it's meaning that maybe when we just have the retrieval on also, it somehow goes through the code interpreter because to create the charts, it needs to go through the code interpreter, right? But okay, now I get what it is here. I apologize for the confusion, but currently I am unable to generate plots or charts since the environment does not support executing Python code or any other programming code directly. Now I know why it is not able to do because I haven't on the code interpreter. It tries to go through this, but then it didn't find the information. But one good thing here is already it grabs some of the things, right? So this respective scores for this and this, but it grabs only five different models and then it went through the bool queue and then from where it went, it, it just went through one, but let's see if it is able to go through that when we on the code interpreter. I will just do the code interpreter on. I will save this. And now we also have provided the code interpreter, meaning that it can plot the charts, right? So now I will ask the same question. Can you plot? So control C, I will go here, control V, add and run. So now it should be also executing the code because we have the code interpreter. Okay, it is now going through the code interpreter and it must extract the information out of it and we know that it can extract the information but let's see how precisely it can uh, grab the information because if we go to this uh, table here we have the models five models and there are one two three four five six seven eight different columns let me go to the ui okay so as you can see here 
it it plots the figure for us but then what it does is it just provides the bool q scores for the first five models from table one but it's quite strange already that it takes five different top top rows models right and then it went through the bool iq scores for some reason it didn't get all of the rows i said can you plot a chart of the first five models from table one it takes the five, but it didn't win through all the columns. What I can ask here, the follow-up question is, can you take into account all the rooms of that table and provide the, okay, provide the answer. I can write, right? Or I can type. Yeah, now let's ask this one because it just went through that, but it's already crazy enough that it went through that, grab the information from the table and provides the answer for us. This has been so simple exploration of the data set. Let's say that let's say it's not even an EDA because we are going through the PDF. It can be used by anyone who don't even know how to code, right? So this is really useful from the UI itself. So you don't need to know all the different codes. Or if you want to implement an application, of course, you can go through the application and create this. I have shown you already in my previous video, as I said you before, how you can create the assistant kind of things. But now, let me go here. It is going through now. As you can see here, the evaluation are based on the following benchmarks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? It went through all the different things and the average of all scores also. And please give me a moment to create the chart. As you can see here, it goes through one step and we ask it to improve that. And now it is going to provide all the information as you can see here. So, okay, it is still writing maybe. Yeah. So here is the paper GPT. It answers, okay, this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. It provides all of the information for us. And we can even go now and say, okay, plot this in the same graph, something like that. We can even try. Can you plot all of this in the same chart? We can say that, right? Now it can go through it and then plot in the same chart. It says, can you, okay, it now again goes through the code interpreter. So this is how you do things, right? You do trial and error because you need to provide good prompt. Maybe in the first phase, first place itself, if I have written there, okay, take information from this, take all the columns out of it and then plot the graph out of it or chart out of it, then it would have plotted. But I just give the random name, okay, plot this. Yeah, it went through there takes the five different rows and then it just plot the first column and then I asked it to improve itself it went and then plot different uh, graphs out of it and now it is again going and then plot different graphs and the good part of this is that it also provides us the, the code also now as you can see here it goes through all of this and then provide the information so in the x-axis there are the models and in the y-axis there are the scores it looks already pretty good enough, but there is not uh, the separation between the models. We can even go here and say, okay, please provide some space between the models and it will provide the space for us also. But as you can see, without writing a single piece of code, we went from exploring simple things to exploring a chart and exploring a data set, let's say a table, and then provide the chart out of it. This is quite powerful and I hope you will enjoy creating this and uh, these things. In the future videos, I might even go and show you how you can create the GPTs from the chart GPT UI itself, but that needs to be having you the, sub, the G, chart GPT plus uh, subscription. But let's see, in the future, I might even create a video, but I hope now you get the idea how to use the OpenAI assistance for functions, for code interpreter, and as well as how you can utilize it for retrieval as well as combining the retrieval and the code interpreter together. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.